My lecture is dedicated to cryogenic technologies in high-energy physics. At the beginning of the lecture, I'm going to tell you about the application of cryogenic technologies as a means of creating a new generation of accelerator facilities. To accelerate particles to high energies, it is necessary to create magnetic fields of a high magnitude. By using classic warm magnets, the dimensions of such facilities become significant, as do the capital costs of their creation. A good example of such a facility is the synchrophasotron, the world's largest magnet launched at the Joint Institute for Nuclear Research in 1957. The discovery of the superconductivity effect in 1911 by Dutch physicist Heike kammerling Ones, which lies in the disappearance of electric resistivity of some materials when they are cooled to nearly absolute zero, led to the development of new materials which allowed for the creation of a new generation of magnets. Thanks to the use of windings from the superconducting materials, new magnets have the capacity of creating large magnetic fields with considerably smaller dimensions. Next, I'm going to tell you about the cryogenic system of the nucleotron. In 1993, Europe's first and the world's second superconducting accelerator, the nucleotron, was launched. The accelerating magnetic field is created by superconducting magnets operating at a temperature of 4.5 degrees Kelvin. To cool off a great number of magnets to the temperature of 4 degrees Kelvin, it is necessary to have a corresponding cryogenic system. Such a system includes a complex of high-technology equipment, the principal elements of which are compressors of the cryogenic helium facility and a system for helium storage. The total mass of the equipment that is being cooled off to 4.5 degrees Kelvin amounts to 80 tonnes. The time of cooling is 100 to 120 hours. To compress helium and gas and to further liquefy it in cryogenic helium facilities, Cascade 8025 wet screw compressors are used. These machines ensure the main compression part. For step-by-step -step regulation, there is a number of small reciprocating compressors. What is interesting is the story of the creation of the Cascade 8025 machines. These machines were built for a large physics project implemented in the Soviet Union in the 80s, known as the Accelerating and Storage Complex, or the UNK. This was supposed to be a large accelerator with its length amounting to around 20 kilometers. The accelerator was supposed to be similar to the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. To cool off such a massive accelerator, a large cryogenic system was planned to be built and, to provide it with helium, a series of 60 large helium machines were expected to be produced. At the time, the physics center in Pratvino didn't have the capacity to test the prototype models of those machines, and therefore, the first experimental prototypes were delivered to our institute and tested here in the cryogenic system of the nucleotron. The tests demonstrated good performance and characteristics, and their operation continued at the cryogenic complex of the nucleotron. The second most important part of the cryogenic complex is the cryogenic helium facilities. In the cryogenic helium facilities, step-by-step -step cooling of compressed helium takes place by first cooling liquid nitrogen and then by expanding the high-pressure helium across a turbine in a turbo expander. The liquefaction stage is performed by a turbine operating in the area of two-phase helium. This is an internationally unique technical solution, which provides an increase in refrigeration capacity by up to 25% as opposed to using classic flux expansion through a throttle valve, the so-called Joule-Thomson effect. A turbo expander is a high-speed gas expansion machine with a circular frequency of 5,000 revolutions per second. This indicator has been achieved due to gas oil supports. Thus, the turbine shaft is mounted on gas oil stream flows and therefore has no rubbing parts creating friction. The refrigeration capacity of the cryogenic system amounts to 400 watt. It is the largest complex for producing liquid helium in Russia. The usage of cryogenic technologies has played a crucial role in the launch of the Nucleotron Accelerator. In 1993, the Russian Federation began selling helium abroad, since the institute had significant capacities for its liquefaction, after which helium in liquid form was sold to European consumers. In doing so, the institute was able to gain considerable financial means for providing the services of helium liquefaction. Largely owing to those funds, the nucleotron was launched. The third part of the cryogenic complex is the helium storage system. The existing helium storage system consists of 10 helium receivers, each 20 cubic meters large, the operating pressure of which is up to 30 atmospheres, ensuring the storage of up to 6,000 normal cubic meters of gaseous helium. 
The created cryogenic complex is unique in many ways, such as cooling of magnets with boiling two-phase helium, helium supply via more than 100 parallel channels, and the application of vapor-liquid turbine expansion engines, which has been securing the operation of the nucleotron since 1993. The application of cryogenic technologies made it possible to create an array of unique physics facilities and complexes and ensured the implementation of some major experimental works at our laboratory. One of these appliances is the cryogenic target. This device is necessary for experiments with nuclei of the lightest elements, such as hydrogen, deuterium and helium, as targets. A cryogenic target is a cylindrical receptacle made of polymer film which is filled with liquid hydrogen, deuterium or helium. The vacuum housing of a cryogenic target is made of polystyrene of special brands. Specialists from the cryogenic department have developed a unique technology for the creation of non-metallic cryogenic targets. This invention makes it possible to minimize the number of extraneous interactions with the beam and to increase the quantity of the generated experimental data. During the 55th accelerator session, a hydrogen target was successfully run at the BMAT N facility during an experiment under the SRC program. Another unique invention is the unclosed superconducting screens. This device is a unique creation by lab specialists and it is used in charged particle accelerators to increase the homogeneity of solenoid magnetic field in electron cooling systems. A remarkable feature of these screens lies in the inclusion of high-temperature superconductors that work not at the temperature of liquid helium, but of liquid nitrogen, that is, 77 degrees Kelvin. Also at the laboratory, a discipline of low-temperature helium thermometry has been created, along with a special stand for the graduation of solid-state, moisture-proof, high-volume thermometers. The existing nucleotron thermometry was created based on these detectors, and it has demonstrated a high level of reliability and accuracy. These thermometers are capable of measuring cryogenic temperatures very precisely while working in the conditions of high radiation and high electromagnetic fields. Temperature measurements of the superconducting rings of the booster and collider will also be performed using these thermometers. So far, over a thousand of these thermometers have been produced and tested for the new NICA project. The laboratory has a department of ion sources for particle accelerators. The main component of this facility is the superconducting solenoid submerged in boiling helium. As a result of the 55th session of the nucleotron, based on the cryon 6T source, which had been created at our lab, ions of carbon, argon, krypton and xenon have been reproduced. In 2016, a superconducting magnet factory was created at the lab. Here, magnets for the projects Nika and FAIR in Darmstadt are being built. The operating temperature of these magnets is 4.5 degrees Kelvin. Cryogenics is represented here in the form of a cryogenic testing section. Each magnet needs to be cooled to helium temperature, and an entire cycle of magnetic and thermal measurements needs to be carried out. The cryogenic complex of the High Energy Physics Lab regularly provides the magnet factory with liquid helium and participates in the work shifts conducting magnet testing. For these tests, three small-sized helium satellite refrigerators have been installed, each with a capacity of 100 watt at the factory. Since 2013, a mega science project of the heavy ion collider NICA has been in its implementation phase. The future complex will consist of three superconducting rings, the existing nucleotron, the booster ring and the superconducting ring of the collider. All the elements will operate at liquid helium temperature. To ensure their proper operation, the capacity of the existing cryogenic complex will be expanded substantially. The principal components of the future cryogenic complex includes the OG-1000 helium liquefier, a cryogenic compressor station, the helium refrigerator of the booster and collider, and a 40 cubic meter storage tank for liquid helium. To double the cooling capacity, JSC NPO Gailey Mash developed the largest helium liquefier in Russia with a productivity rate of 1,000 liters per hour. The first liquid helium was produced by this liquefier in June 2016. Unlike the existing cryogenic KGU-1600 facilities of the nucleotron, this liquefier has an automatic control system and, in the future, it will require minimal intervention by the operator. This is the largest liquefier in Russia. Cooling of the booster and the collider rings will be carried out with the use of helium satellite refrigerators. Refrigerators of this type work together with a larger OG-1000 liquefier. The refrigerators will be placed directly next to the cooled object, and since the access to the equipment will be restricted during a session, they are being developed fully in an automatic execution. To expand the volume of liquid helium storage, 
a transport tank is being developed which will allow the storage of up to 40 cubic meters of helium in the liquid state. The creation of this transport tank will considerably facilitate the present liquid helium supply to customers for usage in, for example, magnet testing setup, ion sources, thermometry testing ground, etc., and will also make it possible to utilize liquid helium as a stored cold source in case of abnormal situations at the cryogenic complex. Since February 2018, a new compressor station with an installed capacity of 8.6 megawatts has been under construction in order to provide the cryogenic facilities with liquid helium. A closed system of nitrogen supply is being created in order to meet the needs of the cryogenic complex for liquid nitrogen. Its advantages include independence from third-party nitrogen suppliers and an overall improvement in the energy efficiency of the complex. The main elements of the nitrogen system consists of nitrogen turbocompressors, a recondenser and a liquefier. The centrifugal nitrogen compressor was developed by the AONEE turbocompressor enterprise in the city of Kazan specifically for the institute, which is designed to provide liquefiers and condensers with compressed nitrogen. This machine has been tested and has been delivered to the laboratory. The nitrogen recondenser is intended for receiving cold vapors of evaporated nitrogen coming from the accelerator and for its further liquefaction and draining into a receptacle for future use. The productivity of this facility is 500 kg of liquid nitrogen per hour. The OA 1.3 nitrogen liquefier, with a capacity of 1.3 tons per hour, acts as a central station and produces nitrogen during peak consumption periods and for third-party consumers. At the moment, without the application of cryogenic technologies, it is impossible to imagine any modern scientific physics project. The usage of low temperatures and the effects related to them offers us an opportunity to further understand the world around us.